Hello, everybody. My name is Lincoln Damaris. I'm Michaela Barrett. And we're here to have a really great time talking about SharePoint lists. Uh, who's, who's been to SharePoint conference before? Oh, wow, okay, great. Lots of long timers, glad you guys came back. Uh, I've been to SharePoint conference a bunch of times. I think this is my first time presenting on the first day. And man, everybody looks so enthusiastic and bright-eyed and just ready to learn and like maybe their pockets are still full of money, it's great. Uh, <laughs> you have no excuses, uh, you're, you, you no excuses to be hung over yet. Who's been outside today? I certainly have not, but yesterday was fantastic. I think it's the only time I've ever stepped into the sunshine in Las Vegas and thought, oh, that feels great, as opposed to just sort of wanting to melt into a puddle on the ground. Well, I'm glad you guys are in here with us today because we've got a great show for you. Uh, think of Michaela and I as kind of like the pen and teller of lists, because uh, I'm big and loud and she has talent. Uh, and we have a ton of magic to show you today, but the main thing I want you to take away is that all the stuff that we show you today, anybody can do it. I, I know there's a lot of SharePoint, who, who's a SharePoint geek, who considers themselves a SharePoint geek? Actually, great, not that many. So how many uh, consider yourselves sort of new at SharePoint, maybe, maybe a journeyman wanting to learn more? That's great. Uh, the point I wanna drive home today and, and the point I want you to take home with you is anybody can use SharePoint list to organize information, drive simple processes, and even build a mobile app. We're gonna build a mobile app, aren't we? We are. Yes, uh, and we're gonna kind of, uh, that falls into kind of three sort of epics here. Uh, building schema, views, customizing your metadata, automating tasks and reminders, making the list look beautiful, and finally, putting the list in front of people so they can work where they feel the most natural. We're gonna demo the following vignettes here. We're gonna start from an existing list, we're gonna show you how to implement some simple team processes with lists and flow. We're gonna uh, have sort of a beautification makeover session where we take that list with process and make it look great. We're gonna build some dynamic pages. We're gonna implement web park connections. Uh, we're gonna build a power app and show off how SharePoint lists can make your mobile workforce more productive. And finally, we love documents. Who loves document libraries? Yeah. Jason loves document libraries. I, I expected thunderous screaming applause there. Uh, that's okay though. Uh, we're gonna show exciting functionality like modern doc sets, I can't wait. Uh, who's excited for modern doc sets? It's, all right, great, that's the last question I asked. I just asked a lot of questions. You guys are totally, totally looped in now. Uh, before, at the beginning of any SharePoint list talk, I like to kind of frame in terms of modern and classic. Uh, who's, who is using mostly modern lists in their organization? Who's using mostly classic? Pretty good mix. You guys are a little bit atypical. Like uh, looking at the broad usage data, modern has really caught on. There's quite a bit of classic usage still. And I, I guess what we, we have represented here is a little bit atypical, but that's great. Uh, everything we show today is gonna be on top of modern lists. All of our new investments are in modern. Uh, we made a big announcement this year that we're phasing out the ability to opt your entire tenant out of modern lists. And so you can opt out at the site or the list or the individual session level, but we're not gonna let you opt your entire tenant out of, out of modern anymore. Uh, is people aware of that? Uh, anybody have a interesting, interesting stories to talk about when it came to adopting that change? I'd love to hear about it after the session. Great. Oh, okay, well let's talk about that after the session. I just wanna make it clear, hey, everything we show you today is modern, classic, still fully supported. We have no plans to stop. Uh, we're really excited about all the new capabilities in modern, but hey, if you have stuff that's still implemented in classic, in custom actions, in custom master pages, we have no plans to turn the lights off on that. Uh, by all means, keep taking, it, taking a dependency on it. We understand that stuff's important, but uh, we have so much cool stuff coming in modern and here in modern that we're, we're hoping uh, after this session, maybe you'll think twice about your reliance on classic. Let's get started. Let's get right into demos. And uh, Michaela's going to, we're gonna start from scratch, uh, and Michaela's gonna show you what it's like to start a new list. All right, thanks, Lincoln. Uh, so we're here at this conference, SBCNA. You guys all said that you've been here a couple times, it sounds like. And we know that there's a lot of booths at the expo hall. 
And I know that when you guys come with questions, sometimes the people at the booth might not know the answer. And when that happens, more than likely, the person that does know the answer is either at the conference, maybe even in that expo hall at the same time. So we're faced with this challenge. How do we get that question to the right person and then back to you as the customer at that booth? And so this is a problem that Lincoln and I on our Contoso Drones product team encounter a lot. Our Contoso Drones product team booth gets a lot of challenging questions. And so we've decided to solve this scenario today in this walkthrough where we're going to create a frequently asked customer list and try to get that information from the owner into the hands of the customer. So before I start and go and actually click new and create a new list, I know that my internal drone team has created an internal frequently asked questions. I'm gonna go check out their list to get a little bit of inspiration. So I go over to my drone support team and I see that they do indeed have a drones frequently asked questions. When I land on this list, I see three questions. It doesn't look perfect, but what I do really love about this is some of the formatting that I'm seeing, the gray alternating with the white, some of these product area formatting, there's owner, some impact. So while not perfect, it's a great starting point for what I wanna do. So I'm gonna go back into my site contents of the team that I want this list to exist in, and I'm going to create a list from that inspiration. I'm gonna name this Drones Q&A. and I'm gonna select from an existing list. So from here, I can choose any site, actually go down to the, re or not the retail, the support where I was, and we can see the drones FAQ is right there. We see that the columns came across, but more happened when I did that. So I'm gonna create a new item real quickly just to show you that the form is also pulled over. So I can create a title, a quick question, you know, what's your favorite? Say it's part of the spy drone, the owner is myself. And the impact is low, so I can save that. And we see one, the row formatting is still there, and two, that column formatting that we saw previously is still there without me doing anything behind the scenes. But like I said, this is not a perfect list for the scenario that Lincoln and I are trying to solve here. So I'm gonna go and add a couple of customizations to make it really tailored to the needs that I have. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a new column in between two columns. This is gonna be the customer contact info. If you don't wanna add it in between two columns, you can do it the way we showed before. We can scroll over and add a column. I'm going to add a new field type that we added called location. And so this is gonna be the location of the customer. And you can choose which fields you want to actually show. So for this one, I'm just gonna show the city and state. Keep it pretty simple in here. Great, this is a good framework for what I have. I'm gonna go into quick edit to enter data in bulk. So first, you're gonna notice a couple of things going on here. One, that was quick. Yeah. <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> Second, we see the row formatting has carried over for the spy drone. And lastly, we notice that we now have this filters pane icon. These are all new improvements that we're making to the quick edit experience. So I'm gonna go into an Excel spreadsheet that I've already created with a couple of questions that I've had. And so we see that we have questions, answers, and some customer info, but this Excel spreadsheet is nowhere near as good as that list can be. So I'm gonna copy it over and add it. We see it gets added, and now it's saving. We'll watch it save. And I'm gonna go through and fill in just a little bit more of the metadata here. So for the owner, I know that Grady owns a lot of these. I can drag to fill instead of having to copy it over. And then I know that Nestor owns this one. Again, I can use the drag to fill. 
And our list is looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and exit quick edit. We see it appearing, and we see the formatting in there, and all of our data has been added super quickly. Now, I added that location column, and I didn't do anything with it. I couldn't even see it in the view. Let me bring it into a better view here. So I'm going to come over and grab just the city, and I'm going to drag and drop it into that view so I can see it really easily. There it is. And I can select multiple items and do a bulk edit of that metadata to add the location really quickly. Oh, that's it. Have you guys seen the location field before? This is really cool. So we see it saved. And we now have the Las Vegas city added. And over here in the other location fields, we have Nevada listed as the state. And I only selected two of those nine that I had. So if you wanted to add the coordinates for some reason, you could add them in the view at any point that you wanted to. Uh, the last thing that I want to do on this list is make sure that I'm able to actually read all of these questions. So I am going to deselect that and actually drag this title field over so I can read the entire question. And now notice, the view property has changed. We have announced about a year ago that we have added the column width to the view property, so that whenever you adjust the column width, it will be able to be saved as a view property so that if someone on a different browser or a different device wants to see it, they're able to view it. So I'm going to go in, save that view, and it's looking good. Now before I hand this back off to Lincoln, I want to demo one last thing that is in a pretty early stage. And it's a new feature on the form that I've shown. So I, I jumped over to a new list that I have this set up in. And you see a pretty average looking form that we have here. Notice this drop down under customize. We now have an ability to show and hide fields. So I can go in and reorder the way that form looks and hide things that I don't think are important for my team to actually edit that form. So I'll go back over to that list there. And I'm going to jump back into the deck to recap. Great. So what we see that we started from a list uh, from existing or a list from Excel. This is a new feature that is going to start rolling out in the next month. Uh, everything that you saw will be available as soon as it starts to hit your tenant. Uh, top of mind for us is how do we do this from a document library? You know, instead of having to create a document library from scratch, how can you create from an existing document library? And then we want to start including things like Flow and Power App and content when you're actually copying over that list instead of just bringing over those columns and the formatting. Next, we walk through ways to customize the metadata, forms, and the view. So available now is the drag and drop functionality that I showed. Rolling out, we have an autosave column order so that when you add a column, it does it automatically, or it does automatically save. You don't have to keep you know, adjusting the view. Uh, sticky headers and column totals, which we've demoed in the past. My list was a little short there, but those are rolling out very soon. And then in development, an ability to reorder the list forms, like I showed, that was a very early version of it working. And then top of mind is a picture and UL URL field improvement. Lastly was quick edit. I showed you some of the improvements there where the load time is much faster than it's been before. We support formatting in it now and the full filters pane is available in it. So if you want to filter on multiple uh, people in a people field, you're able to do that now. And when you navigate between quick edit and the details list, you'll actually be able to persist the different filtering and sorting that you've added between them. All right, awesome. Thank you, Michaela. That was really cool. Like she was, she was at the keyboard for five minutes. She ended up with a really beautiful list, a customized view, color coding, alternate row highlighting, like the ability, like we love starting from scratch. I love starting from scratch, but sometimes you're just way more efficient starting from, you see a team working really smart and you think, oh boy, I wish I could steal what they're doing and implement it on my team. That's what she showed you. It was really cool. And so we have this great list set up. Uh, I'm going to come in and I'm going to be the bad guy. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some process and rigor behind this list. What we have here is beautiful. It's tracking questions. It's tracking answers. It's got owners. But it doesn't have any automated process behind it. 
Um, and so let's get started uh, using Microsoft Flow to really start uh, driving actual workflows that, that result in work happening on my team. I'm gonna show you how easy it really is. First thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a new column. Uh, I'm gonna, I think we need to track dates. So I wanna track an answer by date, answer by. Um, because hey, what's a, what's a project without deadlines, right? Uh, and so I wanna set a default value since we're focusing on a conference here, I'm gonna put that default value as the last day of the conference here. All right, so when we create new items, by default, you have to answer by 523. Uh, you know, uh, default values only work on items uh, after you specify the default value, you have to plug in a new item for that to be applied. And so we're gonna do that manually here for a couple items here. I'm gonna say, this is a particularly impactful one, this needs to be answered by tomorrow. I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna go to this one, I'm gonna say, okay, this has a little bit more wiggle room. Uh, this one doesn't have to be answered until Friday. This will all come into uh, play later once we start creating workflows. So this is really cool. Um, just for bookkeeping here, we're gonna add one more column here. I'm gonna add a yes, no column uh, that says, has the customer been contacted yet? That'll be really interesting later. By default, no. Okay. I think at this point we're tracking all the metadata I need to drive a simple process, now let's actually drive it. One little piece of magic you'll notice here, uh, just by virtue of adding a date, time, column uh, to a list, uh, the system gets a little bit smarter and has a little bit better of an idea what you're trying to do. SharePoint thinks, hey, they're tracking a date in this list. Maybe uh, we should help them set a reminder. When I go under the flow menu, you see there's a new option here that says set a reminder, and it sees the date time field that I just created. So SharePoint's trying to say, oh, you know, uh, do we want to set a reminder on this answer by field? And so yeah, let's do that. And so what I'm doing now is I'm creating a very simple flow to remind me, uh, flow name, get an email reminder. We're gonna call it bug my team, please. Uh, and uh, it's going to remind me one day in advance. Uh, so this is gonna kind of cycle through every day and look for items whose answer by is one day in the future and it's gonna send me an email reminder to keep me on track. So I'm gonna create that. Uh, but that's not quite right, like that, that's, that's great, but you know, I'm just one guy, I don't necessarily wanna get the reminder for everybody's questions because we have an owner field tracking different owners and you know, I don't necessarily wanna be reminded of things that already have an answer, right? Uh, and so this process is a great start, but it's not quite doing what I want to do. So let's see how, it is, how easy it is to tweak that and make it do exactly what I want. So I'm gonna find this bug my team please flow. I'm gonna click the edit pencil. And uh, so this initially looks kind of complicated, like it's, it's a workflow with arrows, clearly it's a sequential process. Uh, and I wanna just get in and make a simple tweak to it. So I wanna find the place in this flow and, and this, is, this is getting a little bit geeky, but, I, but the point I'm trying to make here is, you know, if you're willing to spend just a couple, couple minutes with this, uh, you know, looking at the screen, kind of figuring out what's going on, you, can, you actually don't really have to be a wizard to make simple tweaks. So I can see pretty clearly here that what this flow is doing is it's doing a bunch of logic, it's figuring out what items are eligible for a reminder, and at the, then at the end, it's sending me a reminder email, okay. This is great, I can see how this works. If I change this text, I'm changing the, the contents of the email. But what I actually wanna do is I, well, I only wanna send the email uh, if I don't have an answer. So I can add an action here, and I can add a control block. And a control block is really just a, uh, an if statement. And I can say, oh, cool, okay. This is gonna let me say, if answer, if answer is equal, to null, this is one trick that you have, to, you have to know. So you heard it from me first, if you wanna compare to empty, you have to know null, but everybody knows null, right? That's totally not a computer science term. So I can add that in, and it's great. At this point, I can drag the reminder email into the box that says, if answer is equal to null, if there's no answer, yes, then I wanna send the mail. Cool, I've just tweaked this process a little bit. It's only gonna send emails when, when, it, when I really actually need that email to be sent. Yeah, but one more thing, I don't wanna get all those emails. I'm just the guy setting up the flow. I'm not actually the one who has to do the work. So it's pretty easy to go in, and uh, I'm just gonna click the plus here next to the existing email, add an action, 
Outlook. And it says, uh, send an email. Huh, that sounds like what I want to do. That's pretty easy. So uh, I can parameterize this with the person I want to send the email to. And it's really, it's really easy because it's, it's sort of pre-filling out all the different data from my SharePoint list. And it's found, oh, hey, you have an owner field. Maybe you want to send it to the owner email. Great. I'll tap that. Hey, you, answer this. Answer this. And I can put the, the actual question right in the email. So the person who gets the email knows what I'm talking about. Uh, and they understand right away what needs to happen. And I'll just leave that be. I don't need to fill out the rest of the fields. And you know, you don't have to be scared. You can just delete the stuff that you don't want. So I don't, I don't want to get the reminder email. I want it to be sent to my team. So there, I think we're done. Let's see if this works. So I'm going to click Test. Uh, oh, it actually, look at that. I actually didn't know that. It actually makes you type in an email body. Uh, that's great. See, it makes sure all your data is correct. Um, do it. I'm just going to say do it. I'm not going to parameterize it. So now, now that everything is good, you can click test. And this is really cool. I love, the, I love this feature because it really helps me understand if the thing I just did works. And once you click test, you see it's trying to step through that flow. And you can actually see the logic branch that it took. And so you can see uh, it's actually going through. It's actually sending the email. Yep, it says false, great. If yes, send an email. It found one that had an answer blank. And so then if I go to my mail, I actually see a light. Uh, and I should have an email coming in pretty soon uh, as a result of that flow. Let's see if it'll actually come in on time. Uh, nah. Yes, this is it. Great. Well, that's it. I implemented a simple process. Now let's do one more here. Uh, I'm going to go back to my list. And email's great, um, but these reminders are coming in a little bit late. They're coming in one day before they're due. I actually want to get a notification right away, right when something is added to the list. I want my team to know about it. So what I can do here is I can create a brand new flow. So I can go create flow, and I'm going to pick this one that says send a customized email when a new SharePoint list item is added. And I can add this. I can create the flow. But I don't necessarily want more emails cluttering up my inbox. I want to edit this flow, and I want to make it work a little bit differently. This is, this is kind of a, a, another example of an overall pattern that we, like to, that we like to use. I like to start from something that exists, and I like to tweak it just a little bit to work exactly the way I want. So um, I like that this thing has a trigger. When a new item is created, do a bunch of stuff. Except I want the stuff to be a little bit different. So instead of uh, getting my profile and sending an email, uh, I want to actually create a new step, and I want to post to Teams, because my team has been using Teams to, uh, to work together. So I can actually just search for Teams, and I can see, uh, let's see, post a message. And this couldn't be easier. It already knows about the team associated with my SharePoint site, so I can pick the team, I can pick, well, pick what channel they go into, and I can say, hey, new answer, new question has come in, and I can fill in the name of the question by clicking title. And I can really quickly just uh, link to the item. I can, uh, so people in Teams can actually take action right away, link to an item, save. We'll show you the result of this flow a little bit later. But that's how easy it is to just create a simple trigger that says, hey, when a list item is added, post to my team so people know about it. Really common reusable pattern. Make sense? Sound like something you could implement on your own? I hope so. All right, so we've loaded this list up with custom process now. I want to take it a little bit further. Now, this is the, this is the makeover section of the talk. Uh, let's see how easy it is to make this list look, A, beautiful, and B, something that actually helps keep people on track and moving forward a little better. So we're going to do a bunch of cool conditional formatting demos. Has anybody played with our column and view formatting features before? Great. Uh, let's, let's take a look at some really cool new stuff in that space. So first thing I want to do, uh, I'm going to fill out just a little, doing a little more data bookkeeping here. I'm going to fill out this impact field, because I want to show you who's, who's seen the demos that we've done where we've had cool number bar visualizations on our number fields. I think we did one of those in the keynote. If you've done that before, you know it's kind of a lot of work. You have to do some sort of goofy CSS hacks to make that work. But now we're rolling out a feature that makes that a lot easier. I can go to any number column. I can say. Uh, data bars, I can click that, 
And right away, I get this data bar visualization on my number field. I can edit the template. I can pick the color that I want. And it's just as simple as that. Any number field can look great just with a couple clicks. No JSON necessary. So that was cool. Another thing that I want to do is draw people's eyes and kind of associate concepts with colors and iconography. Uh, people's brains respond very well to that sort of thing. So I'm going to really quickly format my choice field. And uh, you can see that when Michaela created the list, we had some formatting that came along for the ride uh, from the source list. But I can make that look even better. So I can click Edit Template. And what you'll see here is that we have full, rich text capabilities in this formatter now. So if I want to make Spy Drone look a little bit uh, more spy-like, well, all I have to do is click. I can put italics. I can put a more mysterious color here, like gray. And great, I'm making things look great. Uh, I see I have a couple mega drones, uh, mega big. I can use a bigger font color. Um, I can put a you know, dramatic icon. I can put a border. And really, I can, kinda, I can do whatever I want. I can use my own creative impulses. And I can, you know, any choice field, you can easily associate colors, text, bold, italicized, underline, iconography, anything like that. So that's choice fields. That's conditional formatting. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to start, instead of just making things look pretty, I'm going to start using conditional formatting to actually emphasize the processes that need to happen. So first thing I want to do is these titles. I actually want to implement conditional formatting. So I, so I make them bold. When, when, they're, when I have a question that hasn't been answered, I want to make it bold to draw attention to it. And so we have a new uh, Boolean logic designer here where I can say if answer is equal to blank, well, then I can make this thing bold. OK. Uh, this is, pr let's see. Uh, do I? I do have some. There we go. See, you see they're bold now. What's your favorite product? Doesn't have an answer. This one doesn't have an answer. That's great. Um, yeah, that's looking great. The next thing I want to do, hey, you know, I want to draw a little bit more attention to these, this answer field. When I don't have something answered, I want to draw people's eyes to it. And I can, uh, I can choose something really pretty loud here. Um, manage rules. So again, I'll say if answer is equal to blank, I'm going to give that a yellow highlight. I'm going to give it a border here. I'm going to select a border here. I'm going to fill that with yellow. I'm going to give it this uh, red text color. I'm going to bold it. There we go. It's not coming through yet. I think sometimes it likes when I type in there first. There we go. How about that? Yeah, there we go. See, my eyes are absolutely drawn to any, uh, any row in this list that doesn't have an answer question yet. So there's a whole lot of more functionality you can, you can do here if you're willing to write JSON. Um, so I can go format this column, and I can click Advanced. And I guess there's a couple things I could do at this point. Well, I could start authoring my column formatting JSON, or I can build off the shoulders of giants. And that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to follow this Learn More link. And we have some great documentation that lays out the schema of how to do conditional formatting and fields and how to do a lot of really cool stuff. But the thing I like to do, I like to steal from people who have already done the hard work. So if you follow this page a little bit, eventually you'll wind up at our, uh, at our PNP um, samples gallery. So uh, this is a really cool resource. If you want to do something really fancy with your fields or views, this is the place to start. So one thing I really like is this multi-person face pile example. And you can see, ooh, wow. This person has figured out how to get their person group fields in cool little, in cool little pictures instead of words. All I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab this JSON. I'm going to copy it here. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to my list, and I'm going to paste it in. I'm already in the right field. Boom. Oh, great. I've got faces in my list uh, where before I had names, I can shrink that column a little bit, a little more compact. I think this is looking pretty good. A couple more quick things I'll show you here. Uh, does anybody remember the shaded view style from, from classic SharePoint lists, alternate? You notice that, that we just, we, we've, we've had that on all of our lists. And I want to show you how easy that's going to be. All you have to do, you go to the view picker, you go format current view. That's just using an out-of-the-box list styling here. All you have to do is pick uh, what color you want the background to be. Let's go with the sky blue instead of gray, and you get alternate rows. Uh, and so we think uh, a lot of people have asked us for that alternate shaded row style. Here it is. It's coming. 
Uh, and so hopefully this will delight, uh, delight you and delight some of your users. I think that's probably, ah, one more thing. One more thing we're working on in the whole epic of column and view formatting. We're working on the ability to create really cool tile views. So if I go to my document library here, You know, we've had, ever since we came out with modern lists and libraries, we had this tile view. Problem with the tile view is it's, it's, it's a little bit, it's visually engaging, it gives me a cool thumbnail, but there's not a lot you can do with this here. Uh, we're working on the ability to create totally custom tile view experiences here, like this one. Uh, and so these types of views are really uh, useful for drawing your eye and putting your, putting your attention right on processes that need to happen. And so this view has been tuned to put people's attention on the fact that items need to have sign-off. Uh, it shows you the sign-off status, uh, and you can click on these buttons right in the custom view to kick off uh, the flow necessary to move the item forward. So this is a more exciting capabilities coming to view formatting uh, pretty soon. So let's go back to slides and recap what we just saw, because we just saw a lot. Uh, we saw, with just a few clicks, standing up here, I implemented a couple of uh, flows that put a couple of processes in action on my team. And so, most of the stuff I showed you with Flow and the Flow Designer, the vast majority of that is in the product today. You can go back to your hotel room, as I know you will, and give that all a try, and email me to tell me how it went. That would actually be fantastic. But the whole uh, set a reminder, default flow on date fields, that's there today, and all that stuff around Starting, starting flows on SharePoint metadata ads and SharePoint metadata edits. That's all there today. Go and give it a try. We're constantly working on adding more and more flow actions that improve the way flow can talk to SharePoint. So we're adding check-in, we're adding check-out, we're adding grant access. We're just gonna keep expanding that list so you can do more and more with flow talking to SharePoint. Top of mind is this thing uh, we call internally productive columns. Um, sometimes we call them purpose-built columns. We're still picking a name. But we, we think that schema uh, is often tied to intent. And so when you create a date field, you often want to track deadlines. Uh, we want to wrap that stuff up in a, ni in a nicer package, a more automated package for end users. And so uh, I think in a year from now when I give this demo, you know, I stood up there with a flow designer for a while and I, I, I applied conditional formatting after the fact. We want to make more and more of that happen automatically. And all a user has to do is create a date field and we lead them down that road. So we're really thinking of how we can make this drop dead simple for any business user who wants to track a process. We think it's pretty simple now. We want to make it even, we're committed to making it more and more simple so more and more people can get involved with creating applications on top of SharePoint. Uh, we also saw a whole bunch of really awesome new column view and view formatting stuff. Uh, you know, we have, we have an ever expanding schema that you can accomplish if you're willing to write or copy JSON. We're working on better and better graphical tools for customizing conditional formatting, including full rich text capabilities uh, and including sort of arbitrary Boolean statements, if this, then that capabilities and formatting. Uh, we're working on tile-based views, including a tile-based view designer. Uh, and so there's a lot of stuff that we're, that's coming to the service soon and going to continue to come. We're, we're committed to making conditional formatting really beautiful, really flexible, really easy for anybody. So I'm, I'm pretty proud of the list that we've created, Michaela. Uh, do you think we could get it in front of more people by put, uh, embedding it in different experiences in different ways? I bet we can. All right, I think it's time for demo again. All right, so Lincoln just made this really awesome list from the list that I created from a list. That's right. Lists. And we see it over here as a list web part. And so we could scroll through. We notice that there's some of these formats he added. We see all the metadata. We see this product area, the impact, customer contacts, a couple of links to videos. Next to it, we see an embed web part that's not really doing too much. And if we scroll down, we have a document library with all of our drone product specs. So these are files that we've created as a team, and they are also connected to the similar product area, danger level, and they even have the sign-off status and as another flow that we can add to a document library. So this homepage is pretty great. It's, it's useful, the list is adding a lot of value, but to make it even more useful, I have connected each one of these web parts together so that they can work as a dynamic page. So let me show you what that looks like before describing how you do it. If I select this first item, we're gonna see two things happen. 
first, we notice that embed web part turns into a stream video of a drone underwater with a turtle. And that is something that's been added to that question. So the owner decided this video is going to help answer the question. So he adds that in, and in the page we can embed it so you can see it as a click. So each one of these that has a different video, you click through them and you see all the different videos. And so just to be clear, that, that video is in stream. That's not in SharePoint. And so we're, we're actually pulling that directly from stream. Yeah. Stream, yes. And so if we scroll down, we're going to notice that this document library got filtered. We are only seeing things that are in the product area super drone. Now, why is this? This is because the question that I selected up here is in that area. It's in the super drone product area. So the document library below is linked to the item that I select, and it depends which item I, I choose, and will only show the things scoped to that. So what does that actually look like, and how do we set that up? If I go in to edit this page, I'm going to go into this document library. And this web part edit panel is going to look a little different. We can scroll down and see these new menus where you can filter this list by item selected in another list. So I connected it to my drone Q&A master list above. I decided to pivot it based on the product area. But as you see here, I could do it by any of the columns in there. So for our team, the product area is the most important. But we could have easily done it by the customer owner. If we wanted to tailor it to the person, we could choose any of the pieces of metadata in there and pivot the document library by that. So let's connect another web part, just because we can. I'm going to add something called list properties. And we see we get this pane popping up. I'm going to connect it to a source. And for this source, I'm going to add it to the drone Q&A master list. You see that I could also add it to the documents if I wanted to. On the display, it's going to show, uh, show the selected items. And I actually don't need all these fields. No one's going to be really going in and adding attachments or streams on this home page. So I can go ahead, exit out of that. And now when I select an item, we're going to see something happen in that web part. All the list properties appear. And I can actually go in and edit them. So if I decide this impact is actually more of a two, it saves, and everywhere this list is being used now updates. So right on this home page, you're able to interact with all of the different values this list can bring. But that's not all. This isn't specific to SharePoint. Everything that I've shown integrates with Teams for a more collaborative experience. So I'm going to jump over, I guess I will republish, and I'm going to jump over to my Teams. I've already added the home page, and I can show you how to do that in a little bit, but it acts exactly as we would expect it to. So if I go in and select the item, I scroll down and see my document web part scoped to just the product area, as you saw I configured. I see my stream video appearing, and after it refreshes, I'll start to see that list property that I added where I can go in and actually edit the metadata. And so while we're in here, I want to show just how good lists can look inside Teams. So this is the drone Q&A master list that we were pulling all the data from that we were connecting. And we see here that it shows all the formatting. It has all the commands that we're used to. You can switch between any views that you want. And there's a full feature of the details pane. But the really cool part about doing this within Teams is you can actually collaborate right here on the list. So I can open up a chat, and I can you know, ask my, my teammates, say, hey, Nestor. I meant Grady. <laughs> Grady is my demo alter ego. I can ask him how it looks, and he'll get a notification on this list. And so when he wants to go in and actually edit this list, it'll update everywhere so that you can have this real-time interaction on the space. Now, since we're in Teams, Lincoln set up a flow where it would actually post to Teams. Let's see what that looks like. So we saw my post saying, Grady, how does this look? And then this was the uh, flow that he kicked off, saying, heads up, new question for us, samples. And these are the questions that have come in already. And so you can see on the Teams, it's really pulling together everything that we're showing on lists to give you a space to collaborate on it, as well as use those dynamic pages. 
Yeah, the, we hear people ask a lot of the time, hey, should I use Teams? Should I use Team Sites? It absolutely is not an either or. Uh, we think the power of SharePoint can make people more productive in Teams. Uh, teams drives really awesome collaboration, depending on their organization. Some organizations don't want to use Teams at all. That's fine. Stick with Team Sites, you know, as a peer play. Uh, the choice really is yours. SharePoint works great embedded inside of Teams. But I'm worried about one thing, Michaela. What's that, Lincoln? What about our mobile workforce? What are they going to do? We have people at the booth. Uh, how are they going to answer questions? Well, give me a minute. Oh, you got something. <laughs> wow. Oh, you're plugging in your phone. I can't believe this. Oh, this totally worked. All right, there we go. Look at this, we have a drone Q&A app ready to go. So what I see here are the questions that were actually already in the drone Q&A list. So it looks pretty familiar. These are questions we're used to. But this is an app that I built from the list where I want people in the booth to be able to quickly access this list that we've built. So say a question asked me about something, you know, how safe is it for children to fly this drone? I scroll through here and I say, you know, there's there's not a question for children in there. So I'm gonna to go to the information and see if I can find any content on it. This is on the delivery drone. They're actually asking me about the collision avoidance. I'm reading through some content. I see the link in there telling me about more information, but I still haven't been able to answer my customer's question. So I'm gonna hit no on the toggle and I see a new option appear where I can actually add a new question. So I'm gonna click add and I get taken to a very familiar form that we've seen in the list we've been playing around in. I'm gonna type in and say, can my children child use this? And I'm going to set the date for tomorrow. This is very important. The children are important. And I hit save. And so we see that added to the list right down there, which is awesome. We're going to hand back off to Lincoln to what exactly that will do for him. Yeah. So that was cool. And you know, you know, Michaela, anyway. But like, it takes a lot of expertise to build a mobile app, right? Like that. What that took you a couple weeks. Like that mm. was a side project, side hustle. It took me six hours in Power Apps. <laughs> six hours in Power Apps. That's not bad, right? And, uh, let's see. And so I think you're plugging into this list. Can my child use this? So great, I'm back at my desktop computer. I'm seeing questions come in from the field. I can take action on them right here. Uh, one thing I want to uh, point out, Michaela didn't put in a customer contact. I'll put that in here. And I want to call attention to one thing I kind of did behind the scenes while she was working. Uh, we can see here that I have this customer contact field. And I just typed in that. That's my personal Gmail address. Don't use it. Uh, and you can see this column, actually, we're using a really interesting uh, methodology here with the, with the custom formatter. There's so much power in that custom formatter. What this actually is doing is it's helping me drive a process. So uh, you can see that the customer contact is listed here, but it's drawing my eye to this answer. And so as soon as I have an answer, um, I'm the owner here. Can my child use this? Depends. Be a little enigmatic. And once I answer that question, you see the, the format is kicking in and being like, okay, great. This is ready for the customer. We have an answer. We can, we can get back to the customer. Uh, and, you know, that's not, it says send to ldamaris at gmail.com. That's not just a suggestion. That's actually an action. Uh, I, I tried to make that look like a button, but I'm not a designer. Uh, and so, great. I click that, and right away I can run a flow. And so that's actually going to, that actually calls back, emails the customer contact. If I open my Gmail inbox, you'd see that in my inbox. I don't think we have time. Uh, and when I refresh, you can see that it's actually tra tracking the completion of that, uh, of that uh, process. Well, it hasn't sent the email yet. I bet if I refresh one more time, we're going to see that bottom row change. And it's going to give me, I'm looking for that green check mark. That green check mark. See, everybody else has these green check marks. Let's see if we can get it with one more refresh. If not, maybe we'll, we'll stop tilting that windmill. OK. Didn't quite send the email. Uh, but if we waited a minute, we'd see that turn to a green check mark. Uh, and that's sort of the end to end. So mobile workforce plugs things in, people back in the desktop taking action, uh, clicking buttons, sending flows, being productive. Uh, and we see this is a really interesting pattern uh, we see realized a few different places. I think we mentioned at the keynote 
uh, the really interesting Marks and Spencer case study. If you, if you search for Marks and Spencer Office 365, you can get an awesome real world example of a customer who's done this um, to make their workforce more productive with power apps, lists, and flows. It all comes together. So go and learn more about that. That's just one of the case studies that, we've had, that we have. Don't take it from us, take it from our customers. So you wanna recap that, Michaela? Yeah, actually, I think we have 15 minutes. I kinda wanna show, so if someone told me that they spent six hours building that app, I don't think I would believe them. So. <laughs> We're doing it live. <laughs> We're doing it live. So if I went back into this drone Q&A master list and click the Power App dropdown to say create an app, we're actually going to see this pop up here where I can say, you know, Michaela's app. And this is going to open up the Power Apps UI and it's going to show me a three a three-step app that's made just from this list automatically. first step you took, we built that fancy app. This is the first thing you did. Yep, this will be the first thing you do. If you have an extra six hours, you can do this a lot. But if you only have 20 minutes, this is a really great place to start so that people can get on their mobile phone. We're saving. And so you see here that we land on something very similar to what I had, right? We have all of the questions in here. We have a refresh, an add button. And that add button takes you to a edit screen where you could actually use the form that you saw that I had and entered fields. And it's super easy to go through and say, like, I don't want to show these fields. I want to use different colors. I want to add my own pieces here and there. And then there's a detail screen. So this just shows if you were to go into any of the items that I didn't show in my app, it gives you all of the metadata so you can see it right there on the spot. So if I went, saved this app and published it, as you saw, it was one click to say create the Power App. That would be what you see on the phone. If you have additional time to you know, embed the different photos, set up the drop downs, have the visibility hidden with the buttons I made, you can customize it a lot. But out of the box, it's a really great experience to just say create from the existing list, and it could unblock a lot of scenarios. All right. Very nice. Back to the, back to the deck. All right, recap time. So what did we do? Well, we just did a lot. We did just do a lot. So first we kicked off by building the dynamic page. And so that was where we hooked up the different web parts. The embed web part already exists today and the list properties does as well. The ability to hook up the list to the document library is not out yet. Uh, next we went through and showed how does that actually work in Teams. And while we were in Teams, we showed off the amazing list capabilities that you have and the way that the flow hooked up. And I wanna reiterate what Lincoln said where it's not lists or Teams. I'm sorry, it's not SharePoint or Teams, it's both, right? Whatever your users want to use, they can. You don't need to make a choice here. Both work really well together. Uh, we didn't have a Power Apps recap slide. Okay. <laughs> All right, there's one more. Who uses SharePoint to manage documents? All right, great. Uh, everything that we just showed you, we've been spending a lot of time in lists today. Lists and libraries under the covers are, are, are pretty much the same thing. And so everything that we've shown you with flows, Power Apps, um, conditional formatting, view customization, everything there works on documents, but we've got some extra stuff too to show off on document libraries. So first thing I will show is a really popular feature request. Who uses document sets in their organization? Okay, the, good, a lot of hands. Uh, document sets that ha are, have a superpower. Document sets allow you to bundle together items related to one project into one virtual container. Uh, and they're a lot like folders, except that they share metadata across them. So you put metadata on a doc set, you can configure which columns are shared across all items in that doc set, and, and it's sort of a tagging engine. So just by putting items in a doc set and tagging that doc set, you are tagging items for discoverability, for, for retention, uh, and for findability, la findability later. So I have here a modern document library. And if you're familiar with the, the current experience for doc sets in modern libraries, you know today you get punted out to this, this classic page. Now today you click on a document set, you stay within the modern look and feel. You can use modern features like pinning. You see I have some items in this document set that have been pinned to the top. Uh, you can use things like links, so you can build virtual document sets where you can link in items from outside the document set into the document set. And of course, uh, shared metadata works the same way it did before. And so you see here that my document set has been tagged with a particular product area, Freedom Bird, and uh, a danger level, wear a helmet. And you see all these items 
are sharing that metadata. If I change that and say, okay, this is actually a different product category, you're gonna actually see the document set go and push the, that metadata value to all the items inside. So you see here, uh, I changed it to Weekend Warrior. You see that color changing, uh, and you see that shared metadata taking hold on all the documents in the document set. Pretty cool, right? If you're a DocSet user, you should be clapping. <laughs> there we go. Okay, uh, who uses uh, taxonomy? Who's a taxonomy fan? Yeah, all right, both hands up. Guy, is that an orange hat? Yeah, that's, a, <laughs> that's a great hat, absolutely. Uh, one thing that we've done for taxonomy is we've improved the filtering experience. And so we've gotten a lot of feedback from customers that uh, taxonomy filtering is limited. It doesn't let me filter by, uh, it, it doesn't show the right terms and I can't filter by any term in my library. Um, we built this cool little see all button. And so if the terms that you're getting in the filters pane aren't showed by default, you can click see all and I can browse my whole taxonomy tree from within the filters pane. So I'm browsing the full taxonomy here, not just the part that was returned automatically, uh, and I can filter by any term in, in that term set. Pretty cool there. And the last thing I'll show is just how this all shines through in OneDrive. So you'll notice here I'm in this document library. It's got an item pinned to the top. I've got some conditional formatting. We're using our absolutely favorite view style, which is alternate rows highlighted. Uh, when I go to OneDrive, you can see uh, I have uh, this, we have a shared library, Controsa Drones product team. That's where we've been doing our work. And when I click on that, I get the same files. If I switch to list view, you're gonna see we have the same formatting, the same custom columns, the same modern docs at experience. So I can still click inside the document set, see the pinned items, see all the shared metadata, see that lovely yellow color that we created earlier, uh, and really take full action here. And remember that fancy multi-line view I showed you, or that, that sorry, that tile-based view. Well, of course, I can do that right from within OneDrive as well. So here's OneDrive uh, showing me this custom uh, view. And of course, I can still execute these flows. I can still request sign-off all from within OneDrive. Uh, you see this le left nav gives me access to all the team sites where I'm working on files. Uh, and if you work with files and you work with OneDrive, you can stay within the OneDrive context, get to all your team files, do anything you wouldn't SharePoint from, from within OneDrive. So tell your users, hey, OneDrive, it's not just for personal files at work, it's for getting to all of your files throughout all of your sites and doing anything with them. Pretty cool. So that's, uh, that's a wrap here. Let's just recap what we saw. Um, we're running out of time, so one thing that I didn't demo because we, I, we demoed it really well at the keynote, transformative feature to me is at mentions and comments. Who, who's left a comment in an office doc and felt like they were typing into a black hole? I hate that black hole feeling. Nobody writes those, the brilliant pros that I put in these comments. Well, we have this capability of at mentioning people inside comments. They get an email, they get pulled in. Uh, this is sort of transformed office comments into an awesome collaboration feature. So, so give them a try. You can, you can sort of be the agent of change in your organization. Just start leaving comments in office files today. Start at mentioning people, start pulling them in. Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll teach people the, the value of having their files in SharePoint and OneDrive in a way they've never seen before. Uh, so that's fully in production, those at mentions inside comments. Give it a try. Rolling out, we're rolling out the document sets thing as we speak. Uh, we're rolling out full file fidelity in document libraries inside OneDrive. There's another feature we're rolling out called Save for Later. Again, no time to demo that. We're, we've we've uh, sort of run up against the end of our session, uh, working on taxonomy filtering improvements. And if you're a big content type uh, information architecture fan, I don't have much to tell you in this session, but this is absolutely top of mind. Uh, come for Ignite and maybe we'll, and I think we'll have some really interesting things to share there. So, wow, we just showed you a lot of stuff, a lot of demos. Again, I'll make the same point that I did at the beginning. Uh, you and your, your business users, anybody who's motivated to create a process uh, and track data in their team, go forth and be a maker on SharePoint lists. It doesn't require a PhD in SharePoint. It's all just point and click UI. We showed it today uh, and, and you sort of, uh, your users are empowered to go and create this stuff for their teams um, uh, today. So go forth, give it a try. A lot of stuff on the roadmap. I'll just leave this up. Thank you very much for coming to our session. Uh, hopefully you got a lot out of it. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, Chris, come and tell me which ones to build.